Welcome to another Visco training video. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the logistics elements that are part of the system, maintained through the logistics section of the system, primarily to focus on the transport of goods either from the vendor to a warehouse, from the vendor directly to a customer, or from a warehouse to a customer. Uh, in fact, as we go into the logistics area of the system, you'll see that the logistics elements is really comprised of four main things. And these things are fed throughout the system, and I'll tell you the purpose of each one of them as we go through and keep track of the information. Now, people use it uh, in many different ways in our system. Um, there's some reporting that can happen based on these things, of course. Everyone has their own interpretation of what these things are, like anything else in the system. Um, but the primary reason, the core focus of each one of these things, is all going to be based on logistics management. And you see these four here, and I'll just highlight them. These are the four things that we're going to be focusing on during this uh, discussion. So they're all, the, ma the maintenance of each of them is very similar. In fact, it's basically designed from the, ver the very same screen. Uh, it takes a lot of the elements of the maintenance of products, customers, vendors, things like that, um, and simplifies it because each one of these, although it has relevant information, um, only, s only a little bit of that information can actually be tracked. So again, we've got the four sections here, starting with ports. Now ports is going to really represent any place that can be tracked that is not a warehouse um, where goods can come from or to. Um, because of the way containers are tracked in our system, you, you actually have the ability to track multiple ports within that container. One, the port of arrival that you anticipate the goods to come into, and the second being a transshipment port, a, an intermediary port, um, be it local or, or something overseas, that is actually a, a temporary holding point for the goods. So the port tracking is relevant, again, in container management, and the uh, ability to keep track of those ports and store those the, the information about those ports is kept here. So you'll see it works the way a standard Visco scan does. Um, you can follow that in one of our training videos about the scans. And it works the much the same way. You've got a list of accumulating ports here with a code, port code for each one, and also a group. In this case, I've set up the groups to be regional based, but they can be anything else. In fact, we'll see other examples of groups used differently. The concept here being that reporting, show me all of my Pacific ports, show me all my Northeast ports, all the things that are going to tie later on um, into the system when it comes to wanting to interpret your data based on the information you've got. So one of the, just, to, just to touch on that a bit further, one of the ideas that one of our customers takes and, and really works with is how much business am I doing in the Northeast versus the Northwest uh, by way of the ports? Can I, can I accumulate that in some way? Of course, we have reports that do that, in that compile that information. It's all based on the grouping that's being done here. You can either add a new port or edit an existing port, view or delete a port. Um, you cannot delete a port, however, if goods have been brought into that port. So it's just going to have to stay there once you've once you've brought in some goods to that port. To edit a new one, you can't modify the code, but everything else is editable, including the group, the addresses, which I would imagine by this point you've seen some of somewhere in the system. The ability to edit addresses, you select a country, enter in a name, line, city, state, and zip. If it's a international address other than something in the US you've just got a name and several lines of information there. So I'm going to switch back to the US here keep track of that. The other element that is uh, available in ports and this is true of all the, the logistics elements we're discussing today is that tracking of comments. You've got anything you want to do. Uh, the idea of comments here as is anywhere as is true anywhere else in the system is that it's an internal uh, note to yourself. Port information that uh, might be relevant. This is a very this port has, uh, you know, things happening that are making putting into question whether it's worth bringing goods into this port or not any longer. Just uh, some basic analysis information can be tracked there. And then the management of contacts. We have port contacts at the port. If you've got uh, dock managers or anyone else you're working with directly at the port, the same concept is going to be applied with the rest of our logistics element: warehouse contacts, broker contacts, uh, and freight carrier contacts. Here, it's not so valuable. Generally, it's just that. People will, if they do have a contact at the port, keep track of that person here. Contact management, as I said, is the same throughout the system. You can either view or edit an existing contact, manage a group of contacts in a new screen that I'll load up right here, and um, and that's essentially what can be done. You can add new contacts from here, delete, edit, or work with uh, or view existing contacts. So the the information tracked about each contact, same throughout the system. This is sort of a fundamental concept that we track this information information about the contact, the groups, phone, fax, email, address information for marks. You can bring in the address, the standard address. In fact, it will default to the address of the um, 
of this particular port as the standard address for this contact. Update and cancel in contacts. Click done here and you're back into the port screen. Any updates are done, any changes are made, you want to save those back to the system, you want to cancel out, click cancel. So that's all port maintenance and as I said these are all very similar. You can access them on the left hand screen as with anything else in the system when you're working inside of a particular element in that logistics menu or any of the menus in the, in the system. You've got the left hand navigation for further information. Warehouse is very much the same concept. I mentioned groups can be used in a different way. You've got A level and B level warehouses. This is all designed during the, uh, during the setup. You guys can actually control this through the system table. For more information about the system tables, check out that training video. Um, you can add new warehouses, edit existing, or delete them. Same concept. If you've got goods in that warehouse, you cannot delete it. Um, adding a new, I'll just show you one example of that so that we can get through uh, all the functions that are available in this warehouse, or in this logistics element area. And I'm just going to call this warehouse C. And once I've typed in a code to find it, it's got to be a unique code, of course, for each warehouse then you can go and fill in any additional details in the standard maintenance screen as was the case with the ports. Um, warehouses can get very interesting and of course the concept is that you can track multiple warehouses in our system um, and, and each one of them is going to maintain its own inventory and those kinds of things. Certainly more a topic around the training videos associated with inventory than perhaps just these basic warehouse management videos but it is relevant just to mention that multiple warehouses are available and of course we track the inventory of each same tracking uh, of information, basic information here. Is it a direct shipment? This is just for informational purposes as well. Is it a direct shipment? I suppose if we had named it a direct shipment, then yes, we could define it as a direct shipment warehouse. A bonded, is it sitting at the port as a, as a, a bonded warehouse or something that's uh, you know, U.S. government run? And a destination city, and let's say this is uh, Omaha for this particular one. Oh, it already remembers Omaha. That's nice. So we've got the ability to define all those information, all that information, comments, and of course contacts once again with the um, with the warehouses. So oh, I didn't set up a group there, but the same concept is applied here again with warehouse tracking, port tracking, customs broker, and freight carrier. I'll just show you those screens so you get comfortable with the concept. Very much the same thing as what we saw elsewhere. Managing the same, exports to Excel, adding new is to click here. All those things work. One more thing I want to touch on before we wrap up this training video. What is the purpose of each of these as it portrays in the system? The ports, as I mentioned, is accessed through the containers, and I'll just dip into that real quick and show you what I'm referring to. Apparently, Aaron created a test one, and the ports is a is a, a fill a loading uh, filled from here. So we've got these arrival ports selected, mostly for tracking purposes, just information, uh, and that's the concept behind the ports. The brokers is uh, these two that you just saw earlier are the two brokers that we set up. That's going to be relevant when you're creating the instruction sheet, that document that goes out. For more on that, check out the training video on containers. Freight carriers is another one. I'll just dip right into the delivery order and show you that. The carriers is the other element and from there we're going to keep track of obviously as I mentioned the freight carriers here and that allows us to create a document that we can send to that carrier as a delivery order bill of lading for goods to get transferred from the warehouse to the customer, from the port to the warehouse, or from the port to the customer. Um, so that we have all the different types of delivery orders being created, same batch of freight carriers that we're working on to create those reports. The last one would be if we were putting something in warehouse, of course we'd be able to choose which uh, port they're going to go into. Uh, I'm sorry, which, <laughs> which warehouse they're going to go into. So loading out that screen, we've got our list of warehouses, including the one we just created called Warehouse C. So that's the, con the concept of maintaining these logistics elements. Is again, there is more information than just a, a simple drop-down, but there's not as much information as the product customer vendoring system. So that's the idea. Um, if you have any questions, you know who to call. Thank you very much for your time. Look forward to doing another training video with you. Bye-bye.